right here is fail to reject F2R. Fail to reject the null hypothesis. We're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. Uh, the null hypothesis. And what are we going to say about the evidence? The evidence supports the null hypothesis because we did not reject it. The evidence supports the null hypothesis. Thus, it does not support the alternative. Thus, it does not support our claim. So here we'd say the evidence does not support our claim that P is less than 0.10. That was our claim that the proportion was less than 10%. Thus, you put something different. Mm -hmm. so yeah, so in conclusion, right here, you can find this online. And here is the final conclusion we failed to reject the null hypothesis. There is sufficient evidence to suggest that 10% of adults support cloning. So we failed to reject it. The evidence, you can say two things. You can say the evidence does not support it, or that the evidence supports the null. So we can say that the evidence supports the null, that P is equal to 0.10. Uh -huh. Or we can say that the evidence does not support the fact that P is less than 0.10. Those two things are saying the exact same thing. Okay. That was what we did last time. Good. I'm taping this. Oh. Hold on, wait. Stats teacher does the robot. Do it again. <laughs> <laughs> So we point three, the same exact thing is going to happen except we're not dealing with proportion anymore. We are dealing with a mean. We're testing a claim about a mean, but sigma's known. So remember, sigma's known. Can we use Z or do we use T? And that question is, and the answer is Z. Since we know sigma, we can use Z. Um, that is given the fact that we have a sample size greater than 30 and or the original population of individuals is normal, but we'll get to that. Here is our test statistic. Z equals X bar, not P, minus mu X bar, which is mu, not P, not P hat, not P, divided by the square root of sigma divided by the square root of n. This is the only thing that will change in this hypothesis test. Remember last time, the test statistic was Z equals P hat minus P divided by the square root of PQ divided by N. So that's the only thing that changes. Same thing, you've got the test statistic, you've got the critical values, you've got the hypothesis. So let's see an example. Ha! Here is my advice. Anytime you see these problems, when I see them, I read them at least three or four times because that's a lot of information to get all at once. And the first time, you're just on vacation. You're just reading it just to have fun. Just see whatever comes out there. So let's do that. When 40 people used the Atkins diet for one year, their mean weight change was this, uh, negative 2.1 pounds. And it's a bunch of stuff, so I just passed that. Assume the standard deviation of all such weight changes is sigma equals 4.8. We know that's going to be pretty important. Uh, pounds and use a 0 0.05 significance level. I say ding, 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 because that is our alpha. Uh, to test the claim, here it comes, here comes the big information, that the mean weight change is less than zero. So things start coming into your head at that point. We're going to read this again. But test the claim that the mean weight change is less than zero. So based on these results, does the diet appear to be effective? So we can answer those questions afterwards. Let's just take the test. So we need to know what the claim is to do step one. So to do step one, we need to know the claim. So, what shall we do here? Yeah, okay. So we're going to, I'll, I don't know. Trial, I'll tell you what it says. So for step one, what we need to do for step one is find the null alternative hypothesis. So our claim, our claim is, I don't know what to do here. Maybe you. 
Sorry, I know you just came over there. You're Let's in. come back over here. We'll be all right. Hey, all right. So we're just going to do this one on the board. Think about what the claim would be. The claim here is that the mean weight change is less than zero. The mean weight change is less than zero. So what is our, our claim written out? Ah, I've got to have it back over here. Turn it back over here. Got to do this on the board. Mean weight change is less than zero. That's not P this time, it's mu less than zero. That's our claim. What's the direct opposite of that? Mu is greater than or equal to zero. Awesome. Mu is greater than or equal to zero. There we have it. So now we've got to do the null and alternative hypothesis. Which one of those has the equal sign? Looks like the second one. So this one becomes the null hypothesis, meaning this one becomes the alternative hypothesis. And that one was our claim. So I know where my claim is in the alternative hypothesis time. Sometimes the claim is in the null. You just got to keep track of it. This time it's in the alternative. Okay, now we're on to step two. Step two, we'll put that over here this time. Okay, so we're going to draw our little thing. This will be step two and step three, actually. Step two and three. All right, we knew that alpha, if you read the problem, alpha is 0 0.05. It's a 0 0.05 significance test. But we got to ask, is it one-tailed or two-tailed? In this case, one. Carla, what do you think? This one is going to be one tail. One tail. It's going to be one tail to the left. So we draw it in. Drawing is fun. There we have it. That was uh, magic pages. marks. Yes, magic marks or picture pages, whatever. It is. So one day we will see that. But this is an alpha of point zero. Five. Alpha was 0 0.05 from that problem. Alpha is 0 0.05. All of it comes over here. We don't split it because it's one tail. There it goes. Now we look it up in our chart. We're in the Z chart because we know sigma. Say this to yourself, the answer, and I'll say in a couple seconds. Why are we in the Z chart? Sigma known. Hey, where did that come from? Okay. Um, <laughs> All right, 0 0.05, we're going for 0 0.05, and it looks like it is right. There's 0 0.0505, there's 0 0.0495, right in the middle is 0 0.05, it come down, and it looks like negative 1.645, negative 1.645. So there we have it. Just like we did last time, negative 1.645, nothing's changed this right now. We've done the same exact things. So now we're gonna hit step four. Step four is the test statistic. This is the only part that changes. The test statistic. Great. The test statistic is this time z equals x bar minus mu divided by the square root. Okay, if you make a mistake, you just erase it and keep going. It's uh, sigma divided by the square root of n. Z equals x bar minus mu divided by sigma. This could be x. We could put mu x bar there. But you ask yourself, mu x bar, what is mu x bar? It's mu. They're both the same thing. <laughs> Notice this thing here is sigma x bar, but that's sigma by the square root. That's our test statistic. Great. So if we come back over here to the problem, we can get all that information. We need to know x bar, and we need to know sigma. We need to know x bar, we need to know sigma. So we go through here and we find when 40 people used the Atkins diet for one year, their mean weight change was negative 2.1 pounds. <coughs> was negative 2.1 pounds. So, and our sigma was 4.8 pounds. So, let's come back over here and we will roll with this. And what we have this time is we have a uh, little bit of what? Right here. So we've got x bar is negative 2.1 pounds. That was our x bar. Minus mu, 